Hi there! In previous module, we classify a mixture into two types. The homogeneous mixture, which have a uniform appearance all throughout, and the heterogeneous mixture that have two or more distinct phases. Now we can further classify mixture according to the size of each particle. And now, we will be learning about the types of mixture based on the size of each particle. Now are you ready? Let's begin! Now, look at the sample of mixtures here. How do they differ from each other? In the first sample of mixture, it has a uniform appearance. One phase is visible, that is because salt dissolves in water. While in powdered milk mixed in water, it appears cloudy. And on the third sample of mixture, the corn starts mixed in water, it does not have a uniform appearance. We can still see the components of this mixture, which is the cornstarch that settle at the bottom and the water. Now what kind of mixture are they? Now mixtures have different properties depending on the size of their particles. Now there are three types of mixtures based on the particle size. They are the solution, colloids, and suspensions. Now let us differentiate solution, colloids, and suspension. Now let's begin with the size of their particle. Solution is a homogeneous mixture with a tiny particles. The particles are too small to see and also too small to settle. While colloids is a mixture with a medium-sized particle. The particles are large enough to see but not large enough to settle. And in suspension, it is a heterogeneous mixture with large particles. The particles are large enough to see and also to settle. Now based on its appearance, solutions are clear and have a uniform appearance all throughout, just like salt mixed in water. When salt is thoroughly mixed in water, salt will no longer be visible in the water and won't settle at the bottom of the glass. So therefore, it appears a single phase or uniform all throughout. While in colloid, it appears cloudy, but we cannot identify the component of what we mix. Just like for example, powdered milk mixed in water. And in suspension, it appears cloudy also, but the components are recognizable. Just like for example, cornstarch mixed in water. If the mixture sits undisturbed for very long, the mixture will separate into its component parts. That's why suspension should be shaken before you use it. Based on its filterability, filterability is the capability of mixture of being filtered or separated by filtration. Solutions are cannot be separated by filtration. Their particles are too small than the pores of the filter paper, so it can pass through it. While in colloids, it also cannot be separated by filtration. In suspension, their components can be separated by filtration. Just like for example, cornstarch mixed in water. The particles of cornstarch are larger than the pores of the filter paper, so it cannot pass through it. It will remain on the top of the filter paper. The last property is Tendal effect. Tendal effect is the phenomenon in which the particles in a colloid or suspension scatter the beams of light that are directed at them, just like what you see in this video. Now, in which mixture do you think shows Tyndall effect? 
As you can see in this video, in salt mixed with water, which is an example of a solution, light does not scatter because its particles are too small to scatter the light. While on the second sample, which is a mixture of powdered milk and water, which is an example of colloid, light scatter because the particles are large enough to scatter the light. And in the third sample, which is a mixture of cornstarch and water, which is an example of a suspension, lights also scatter because the particle of this mixture are too large to scatter the light. So therefore, we can say the solution does not show tendal effect, while colloids and suspension shows tendal effect. Now here are some examples of solutions. Vinegar, rubbing alcohol, while in colloids, gelatin, paint, mist, and in suspensions, muddy water, oil, and water. Now, oh, it's your turn. In this activity, you are going to classify its mixture into one of the three groups, solution, suspension, and colloids. And to summarize what we have discussed, 